Hey everyone, Pinnacle has official support for the Foundry VTT, which is great. It has official character sheet, it has a way of handling bennies, it has um, drag and drop equipment and that sort of thing, and all sorts of good stuff and goodies. But as a game master, I still found a few scripts and macros that I felt like I needed to write to make my life a little easier, and I'd like to share them with you today. It's a savage world, strange as a weird world. Everyone, it's Carl with Tabletop Tango. Look at the bubbles, do the stuff. We'd love your support. We'd love to be able to get more um, Pinnacle stuff, some more Savage World stuff to talk about on the channel, and you can help out with that. We also have a podcast called Mastering the RPG that we'd love you to take a look at or look at listen to, and that'd be great too. So what did I want to talk about today? I wanted to talk about um, my scripts, some of the macros I wrote specifically for Foundry VTT to support my Savage Worlds gameplay. As I mentioned, Savage Worlds has an official um, module, world, setting, whatever you want to call it, that allows you to manage your character sheet. It's got items. It's Really quite good. Um, probably not as good as some of the other ones uh, for like Pathfinder 2E and that sort of thing, but it's still pretty good. But I find myself wanting to build my own macros. And so I wanted to share a few with you today just to see what your thoughts are and uh, maybe you can use them and, and enjoy them. I'll put a caveat in that these are ones I wrote for myself. So I didn't necessarily write them to be published, so you're gonna see some weird variable names probably. You'll see some code that you'll say, that's not the way I would structure it. And you may find edge cases where they end up uh, crashing and not working and probably on input validation to be quite honest with you. But anyway, I'll still share them. You can take a look at the description and I'll have a link to a zip file where you can grab them. So let me go and jump over to the screen and show you what I've got. Um, so the first ma macro I have is a dice rolling macro. And the reason I have have that is I don't like making extra character sheets. It takes time. Um, sure, for wild cards, why not? But for extra, it takes time. It's and I don't think it's that valuable. So for my extras, I just know that, again, the, the classic Savage Worlds trope is um, D6s for things, D8s for things they're good at, and for things they're not so good at, D4s, and just keep it simple. And so this first script I have does just that. It's a mook roller. First thing it does, all it does is bring up the list of dice that you can choose. You click on one and you get an extra with the roll and the wild die. That's it, super fast to get the job done. And that's what it's good for. Sometimes in Savage Worlds, you have a lot of mooks going against the players at the same time. And who wants to click and roll for I don't know, five extras all shooting at one of the players on their turn or shooting at multiple players. So the second macro I have is the same as the first, but now I can put in a number of dice, a number of extras. So if I had five extras all shooting at the same target with a D6 capability, I get all those rolls right up front. I do add the wild die into the script just in case I do want to use it for a wild card. And I do, as I add wild cards in that maybe aren't worthwhile putting on a character sheet, um, an independent actor sheet in the game. So those two macros save me just a ton of time and they're super simple. There's not a lot to them. And again, I'll share them. Um, the next macro I have that saves me some time is the modify calculator. So we all, as game masters, we're dealing with um, the calculation of modifiers constantly, right? Oh, your target is behind cover, they're at long range, and you're on an unstable platform, whatever, and all those things. And usually it's pretty quick to, to figure them out. But when there's a lot of them going on and, you know, your memory is not so good, I created a modify calculator, which essentially allows me to, with one click, bring up some of the standard modifiers that I would use on a regular basis. So um, if I've got the range is medium and the cover is light, one click, it'll calculate that modifier for me, which I then can put into um, a page or a role that I want to use. Um, or I can tell the players that they're doing it at a minus four. Um, obviously, in your mind, you probably have most of these modifiers, but boy, it's nice just to have something you can click and just click a couple of buttons and get the modifier out there for the, for the person as we're trying to figure it out. Because I know lots of times in the game, We've got a lot going on and we're saying, okay, well, if you've got that and you got that and then you wild attack and then, um, oh, wait, they're vulnerable and how does this all add up? Super simple, makes life easier. Okay, and then the next macro that I have is what I'm called the Savage World Attack 
uh, macro. Now, a long time ago, there was the Savage Worlds tools for Foundry VTT, and it had a similar attack macro. And the whole idea is to save me from having to do a bunch of roles. And so for this macro to work, I essentially target a token, and that's you click on the target icon. So we'll select the target, and then we select somebody who's attacking the target. So we have a selected token, and then we have a target token. And then I click on the Savage Worlds attack macro, and it'll show the weapons that they have available. And some are fighting, and some are going to be shooting. And so we'll select the shooting one. Um, we can put our damage modifiers, our attack modifiers. So remember, I got the modifier calculator. Maybe I figured the modifier out from there, and I put it in here. Um, so let's go ahead and roll. Um, so we get our shooting roll. We got a 12 on our shooting roll. Nice roll. It was a hit. Talks about what the damage is. It does the damage. It did a damage of 12 with an AP1. Um, target toughness is 11 with 4. So it automatically takes that AP into account and says we hit, but we got no raises. And so I did that all in one single roll, which really kind of saves, saves a lot of time um, and a lot of, you know, for me, at least, it saves a lot of time. So let's go ahead and make sure we hit with this great sword. And the same thing, we have a fighting roll, we show the damage, we roll the damage, we look at our, and we may have damage, we may not do any damage, but I can, the whole point is I can do it in kind of one quick roll, uh, great for if I'm, you know, don't want to spend a lot of time with a wild card, or again, I have some mooks, and some of the mooks are a little bit different that, you know, my other rolls aren't useful, I can go ahead and take advantage of take advantage of this script. Uh, then I also have a fear check script. And the reason I have this is you can obviously do a fear table, simple to do. But this, again, takes the spirit value from the token that's selected and goes ahead and roll a fear. And if they fail the fear check, then it goes ahead and rolls on the table. So we get the fear penalty. So if the creature, let's say, has got a minus four fear, we can go ahead and roll. And then it shows that on our spirit roll, we got a one. So we probably got, you know, a five, but then the minus four, we got a one. We failed it. And then it goes right ahead on the sphere table and rolls and gives us what that what that is. And so in this case, they're shaken. Super simple. Again, it's, it's just to save some time um, and... Usually players aren't going to use that because they've got their one character sheet and they're doing it, but it's, it's useful for me as a game master. Um, and then the last one I have is the damage raise, which is nice just to have. You click on it, you put the damage value in, and it's for the target, so the, the, or for the token selected. So if we select this token and we go ahead and we do, say, a damage of 10 with an AP of 2, we go ahead and roll that, and it says it goes and pulls up the toughness of the target. Um, in this case, it looks like I work off the target. So there you go. That might be a bug in this crypt. Um, oh, no, that makes sense, doesn't it? Go off the target. So we go off the target. We look at their armor, their AP. We compare it, and we say what happened here. So we do a damage of 10, AP 2. That takes two armor off. That makes that a little nine. Yep, we met the toughness, but we didn't get any raises. So those are just some of the scripts I use. Um, again, nothing really super complicated. I use these MOOC roller scripts all the time um, because, again, I don't like to have character sheets. Occasionally, the Savage Worlds attack macro is pretty useful if you're just trying to get it in there get it done and not spend all your time clicking on buttons and opening sheets um, and that sort of thing. Um, and then finally, I like the modifier calculator because my memory's not always as great as it could be, and we can go through and just click a ton of modifiers and just go and find out what those are in one click. Tell the players it's in the uh, it's in a chat. You can use it. Simple stuff. So again, I'm Carl with Tabletop Tango. Look at the bubbles, do the stuff. Um, please would love your support and check out Mastering the RPG podcast. Um, and we'll catch you next time. Thanks much. It's a savage world, strange as a weird war. It's a savage world, classic